of you know, Pat Bowler is a Hamiltonian. You went to the Ohio State University. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate that. He, uh, in addition to all his mayor duties, he's also a practicing full-time attorney, which I don't know how he balances that. But here's what I do know. And I've been in this community not as long as many of you, but for the past 60 plus years. And I have never seen city council working collectively together as an effective team as much as they are today. That's a real tribute to Pat's leadership and frankly his communication skills and leadership. So Pat, thank you for making city council stay on track. Thank you. Joshua Smith, I don't know if you uh, had a chance to look up here. Anytime you talk to Joshua, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I sort of came in, it's late in the day, I have to be in Cincinnati in 45 minutes, I'm rushing around, and all of a sudden I just get this passion about what he's talking about. You can't talk to the gentleman without getting passionate about our city. I have never known anyone as passionate about making our city as great as it possibly can be. He became our 17th city manager in September of 2010. When I give you just some of the things that I know that have been accomplished, and then you see his report today, we're talking the last five, six years, folks. Notice typically government works at the speed of a turtle. All right, one of the things, and I've said this many times, and I apologize if you've heard me say it, Shortly after meeting Joshua, one of the things he said to me, and I went, are you kidding me? Actually, I'd like to use words stronger than that. He said, we're gonna change our, our culture at the city. We're gonna work at the speed of business. I thought, wow, this is fantastic. Well, frankly, when you see his presentation today, you'll know that they've been doing exactly that. And if you're not aware, the things that have been accomplished in his short term and the term of uh, vice mayor at, from 2004 and then mayor, I don't know the exact year you became mayor. Seven years. Okay, so between the two of them, they've both been in this role for well over six years. Just let me list a few of the things. And frankly, if I got down to the details, I'd be doing your presentation and that'd be a very disservice. <laughs> All right, one of the very first things that Joshua announced and keep in mind, this is city council in Joshua. They have, will work hand in glove. It's not just by himself. The city's first uh, 311 system online where you can communicate with city officials. You can, make second, you can make recommendations. You can tell them about things that, that are concerning you in the city. City council and Joshua and the city staff fully understand customer service. Folks, that is paramount. If you're a citizen of this town, if you're a business uh, person in this town, it just, I can't say enough. Establish the Hamilton Core Fund. Significant downtown revitalization. Hopefully you'll see some of that today, although it's probably more current. If you don't know it, obviously the Core Fund is also focusing on Main Street development. They've seen the impact on downtown, so it obviously makes sense to go to Main Street. Also established the Hamilton Parks Conservatory. River's Edge Amphitheater, Markham Park, multiple splash parks, downtown Pocket Park. If you've driven by any of our parks, they look much better today than they did five years ago. Much better. 17 strong neighborhoods. The Hamilton Mill, the business incubator. What you may or may not know, there are numerous new businesses being launched because of the success of the Hamilton Mill. <laughs> Infrastructure, which you may get some report on today, I'm not sure. South Hamilton Crossing, East High Street, Third Street Quarter, intersection improvements that are in the pipeline or already started, High and Martin Luther King, Main, Millville and Eaton Avenue, Main, Serial, Western and Haldeman Avenues. For those of us that live in this community, you know how many years we've talked about trying to improve those intersections? We're not talking, folks. They're doing things. And they're doing them very, very quickly. But last but not least, the two gentlemen before you, along with a very professional, dedicated staff, Jody Gunnison, the Economic Development Director, this is the part we all love the best. 
They're bringing jobs back to our community. 2,000 plus? Uh, 3,000 plus in the last 36 months. See? <laughs> I just count out my head and I had 2,600. All right? Not 260. 3,000 plus. So, without further ado, so I don't take away their time, Mayor Pat Moeller, I think he, he's going to lead off. Pat, thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, and, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. City Manager Joshua Smith and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to update you folks on some things and to answer some of your questions. You know, as mayor, I get asked a lot of questions. I'm going to try and give you some answers initially in kind of a unique way. You know the game show, the TV game show Jeopardy, don't you? Where you, the answer comes up on the screen, and then you hear the question. Or you might remember Johnny Carson. I'm old enough to remember Johnny Carson. He'd hold the envelope up to his head, and then he would uh, give a question. So we're going to do that for just a couple things, just for, just for some kind of fun. So let's play Jeopardy for a minute or two. I'll give the answer first, then I'll supply the question. The answer, cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Question, how do things look for the possible indoor sports complex at the old champion paper site on B Street? And I'm going to use that word cautiously optimistic. There might be some more details by our city manager about that. I get asked that a lot. And I'm going to say, again, cautiously optimistic, wait and see. Second one, the answer is mid-May, mid-May, OK? The question that I get asked a lot, when will the Municipal Brew Works open the microbrewery in downtown Hamilton? I'm going to say mid-May. Might be sooner, but mid-May. Again, our city manager may have more detail about that. The answer, it is now. It is now. The question, when will the Meldahl hydroelectric power plant on the Ohio River be fully commercial and generating hydropower? It is right now. Something for all of us to be proud of in the city of Hamilton, a truly green, green city. Now for the last one. And then I'm going to give you some other random information before our city manager speaks. The answer I gave was, I wish I had a third choice. I wish I had a third choice. I was at Ridgeway Elementary School yesterday, and this is a shout out to Ridgeway Elementary School third graders. They asked the darndest questions, and I like playing with them. What would you do if you were a mayor for a day? Well, it ends up this one student asked me, Mr. Moeller, who are you voting for as US president? My answer was, I wish I had a third choice. But that's just me. We'll see how things pan out during the rest of the uh, campaign season. And now for some random matters. And it's based upon what city council's kind of done January, February, March, April. So I went and got all the agendas. So I would kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on and what council's been discussing at meetings, which you are all invited to appear. You can come to the podium and speak and kind of tell us what's going on in your lives and what you think we should do. Because the meetings are on the second and fourth Wednesday at six o'clock at Hamilton City Council Chambers. One thing we're working on a lot are housing and health codes and ordinances to try and make our, our city more pleasant in appearance, to be a cleaner city for those of us who live there as well as those of us who, who, uh, who visit and bring family in and the like. So we're doing a lot of work on our housing and our, our health codes. Um, something that, that, that you may know a little bit about, we have a, a mural program called the Street Spark Program. And you'll see some murals on buildings popping up here and there. Some are, 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 are very uh, modern, some are less modern, but I'm, I know you'll appreciate a lot of them. And one is dedicated to uh, the writer Robert McCluskey, the artist and writer Robert McCluskey, right by the lentil sculpture in downtown. So you'll start seeing some of those uh, street spark murals pop up. Uh, the appearance of our downtown uh, with our, our, I'll call it the new East High Street corridor 
You're now starting to see the landscaping turn green, a lot of uh, really nice street trees, and the new lighting, the underground util the underground electric is, 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 is there instead of the above ground extension cords going across the street and down the street. So we're, our downtown looks probably as good as I can ever remember our downtown looking. And a lot of that is due to, to our, our city administration and of course our city manager, Joshua Smith. So uh, our downtown's looking pretty good. We have a downtown special improvement district, uh, which helps things look very, very good in our downtown area with landscaping, flower pots, and the like. Uh, one thing which I know the city manager is going to uh, be addressing is something called the core fund, the core fund. And you'll see a few examples of what the core fund has done in downtown Hamilton and what will, it will be doing in our Main Street area because we're gonna be crossing the bridge over to Main Street with uh, visual improvement, uh, more small businesses, uh, more quality of life uh, destinations, restaurants and the like. I heard from a recent college graduate Wherever I see those green core fund signs, I know something good's gonna happen. I couldn't have said it any better. When you see a green core fund sign, things are good and gonna happen at that location. There's been some talk a little bit about our Parks Conservancy. Gotta give a lot of credit to Steve Timmer, who is in charge of the Parks Conservancy. I swear the grass is greener, it looks better, uh, the landscaping all looks better, uh, and it's due to the idea uh, that city administration brought to us to put our parks into a parks conservancy. Uh, I mentioned hydroelectric power, our utilities. Of course, you all own our utilities. Uh, we uh, have an efficiency smart program that's been going on for a while. The goal behind that is to uh, assist our utility customers uh, to be able to reduce some of their utility bills, use more efficient lighting, more efficient appliances, and the like. And that Efficiency Smart program has helped a lot of our businesses, but it's also there for you residents. Uh, our finance department, we've done a lot of things neat in finance. Uh, we're becoming, I believe, the most transparent city when it comes to finances. We have something called open.gov, which is an online uh, program that you can see where we spend our dollars what credit cards are used and where they're used. It's just a very, very transparent program. And I think we did it before the, uh, the Ohio State Auditor did it. Uh, again, we have a great team in our finance department and we've been awarded various recognitions for, uh, for how good they have done and we're very happy about them. Art space downtown uh, is filled with artists in uh, residential studios. Uh, our McDoolin parking garage I'm not sure if you had a chance to park in there lately, but uh, brighter, safer, efficient lighting. It's a project that is, is redoing that entire McDoolin garage, which is becoming more filled with people who work at StarTech, the old Elder Beerman building, which has come to life. And I know Joshua is gonna mention a lot about how that building has been repurposed and come back to life. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can paving our roads and improving our intersections. Uh, you'll see the improved intersections as this year and next year take place. Um, paving, we've got some ideas on how we're going to improve the paving. I know River Road is bad. I hear about that a lot. I ride that a lot. And we're going to hopefully do something to improve that even this, even this summer. We are still recognizing a, a, a lot of people at our, at our city council meetings. Uh, we had a welcome home for some Vietnam veterans uh, because we needed to give them something which they did not maybe get when they came home the first time. Um, we give proclamations to people who do special things. Uh, we had a gentleman who's got a business over one of our enterprise parks who started a, uh, a Flint, Michigan water donation program. So, and we enjoy starting our meetings that way. Uh, we of course do the Pledge of Allegiance and offering a prayer. Then we do special presentations, which most every single one is positive. So if you come to a meeting, we like recognizing people, we really do. Young, middle-aged, our seniors. We recently recognized the late David Brownfield, who many of you may know, as well as Ed Loving, who served many, many years on our uh, Public Utility Commission. And we thank them uh, in the memory of David through a proclamation. We have a compressed natural gas station 
and we're starting to use that uh, more. We like to have more of our city vehicles be compressed natural gas. We'll kind of see how that, that rolls out. But we now have a contract with a pretty large trucking company who does have compressed natural gas vehicles. And uh, so you'll see that natural gas station, compressed natural gas station, next to our city garage being used more and more. And I've noticed gasoline prices have gone up and down, up and down lately. $1.99, then it's $2.39. So we know, who knows what's going to happen with the next president, but we've got compressed natural gas, which is, I do believe, the, the future. There was a mention made by Jeff about the 17 Strong project. Uh, 17 Strong is a neighborhood initiative. People living in, in we have 17 designated neighborhoods. Uh, we're trying to get leaders in each neighborhood to form a group, whether it's for appearance, whether it's any kind of neighborhood pride that, 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 that they can put forth throughout that neighborhood. Uh, uh, neighborhood watch, but 17 Strong is something we're really developing, put that on the fast track so uh, our neighborhoods can continue uh, looking good, being a nice, safe place to drive through. And we're definitely a, a city of neighborhoods, I believe. So that project, that program, that initiative, 17 Strong, is a, is a very, very good program. I'm going to wrap this up a little bit. I'm going to say one thing we definitely have done is, which I think is positive here in 2016, we hired a municipal arborist. That's basically fancy words for a tree guy. And I uh, had a chance to drive to West Carrollton with him for a tree city recognition. And Hamilton's a tree city. When I first got on council, we weren't a tree city. A lot of folks said, why not? Fairfield is, other cities are tree cities, why not us? It's that why not us spirit that I think is really helping us get things done. Uh, why not Hamilton? But we went to this tree city recognition and our municipal arborist, what a, what a, what a neat guy. He uh, is going to improve the appearance of our entryways. And that's very important. That's sometimes your very first impression is when you drive into Hamilton on, on East High Street, when you, when you drive into Hamilton from, uh, from Millville, uh, Main Street. He's going to try and improve the entryway appearance through landscaping, through the planting of a couple hundred new trees. And also, I'm not sure how many of you have had a situation in the past or currently where the utility company has had to cut down part of your trees or something like that when the trees are in the electric lines. I'm not saying we did that well in the past, but we're going to do that very well in the future. Uh, he's got an idea, and it's all customer service oriented. And our city is truly trying to improve its customer service. There's going to be ample notification prior to someone having some trees cut down in the easement of where their trees might be located that are going up into the utility lines, but he's, he's great on customer service. So this gentleman is really going to improve the appearance of our city, and we're lucky to have a, a municipal arborist. We have some uh, documents. We got our initiative update for 2016. I'm not sure if we brought any of these here today. Boyce says yes. So we definitely brought these here today. Really neat updates of where we are on some projects and what projects we've completed and which ones are, we're moving down the timeline. So we're very proud about that. Please take a good look at that. If you need more, we'll get you more. I'm not sure about our economic development annual reports. Man, this team over here is great. Joshua and Boyce, what a great team. I'm going to wrap this up by saying we've got a lot of great young people in this city too. I really had an enjoyable time talking to third graders. Um, they're our future. Um, they know how important it is to vote. They want to vote now. They want to vote now. And I said, well, now you got to wait till you're 18 or, or 17 under certain rules. Uh, I speak at our public schools. I speak at our parochial schools. And these youngsters are really, really smart. I'm like begging them to come back to Hamilton after they go to school for whether it's a year, two years, four years. Whatever they do after they graduate from high school, I'm begging them to come back. And you know what? I bet a lot of them will because of what they have seen happen in the last five or six years. I know our Hamilton City School District, Hamilton Proud, I think that's kind of neat because it's generating pride amongst the students, pride amongst the teachers. Makes me proud when I see it. Our parochial schools are, are truly second to none, whether it's the Baton experience or what's going on with Emanuel Lutheran and, and the parochial elementary schools. 
We've got a lot of great teachers, great administrators, and great students. So I know long after I'm, I'm gone, there's going to be a lot of good people making this city become better and better and better. And I just see it from them. I hear it from them. Their questions are, are tough for me to answer from the third graders, much less when I start talking to some of the older students. I'm going to let Joshua Smith go ahead and, and hit the home run right now. I think hopefully I'm on base. And I'm not sure. Maybe hit a single with this. I don't know. But we're going to let him go ahead and hit the home run. I'm going to move my paperwork over and introduce to you our city manager, Joshua Smith, as I pick up all my paperwork. Joshua Smith. Steve, do I need this? or is, Nope, this is picking me up. Good. I'll let you turn that off. Hello, everyone. Before I start, uh, and I, I say this with all sincerity, I've had the, um, the opportunity in my life to live in a lot of different cities. I've worked in several different cities. I can tell you without having the type of mayor that we have that we would not have experienced, I think, the positive trend that we've seen the last couple years. So let's give the, uh, Mayor Moeller another round of applause. But. A year ago, the mayor and I were here, and we spent a lot of time talking about the former Elder Beerman building. And I have a lot of photos of that for those of you that may have not been had the opportunity to go and see the inside of that yet. But I was at a different meeting this morning at the Chamber of Commerce, and I was presenting an idea. And I, I hear this all the time. They're like, well, can you show us the plan? Well, a lot of times there is no plan. With Elder Beerman, you had a, a department store that was built in the late 1960s. It's 160,000 square feet spread over four floors, and it was built as a department store. So the pictures that you see today of Elder Beerman was not because someone sat in an office and said, well, we have a plan that we can put a call center in some of that building, up to 690 employees when it's fully staffed. We can put a market slash deli in that building that we can put a diabetes center in that building, an art gallery in that building. That's not Elder Beerman. But all those other ones are. And the amazing thing to me is that this all came together. And it wasn't because someone sat around and said, we want to put those things into an old department store. It was because we kept an open mind. We worked through the process. and. There are several partners involved in that. Obviously, the core fund, first and foremost, you know, our own city staff, and private individuals that had a vision of what this could be. And I think that if you take a look at Hamilton, Ohio, that's been here since 1791, and all the tremendous assets we have, and we keep an open mind about acknowledge what it was in the past, but embrace what it can be in the future, there's nothing that can stop us. The mayor spoke Monday at the Barclay Card ribbon cutting. And it did not pass me by that Champion Paper would have been 130 years old this year. 130 years old. It was in operation for 120, 115 of those years. And when you think that it started in 1896, and by 1910, it was the largest coded paper manufacturer in the world. Literally 15 years after it started, the largest in the world at what it did, and it did it for many, many decades, over a century, and then it just disappears. And then what do you do with the office building out at Knightsbridge? And again, no one was sitting in an office two or three years ago and said this is going to be a Fortune 100 credit card processing facility. But we kept an open mind. We worked the prospects that were coming in. And I think we got a tremendous fit. And the one thing that may be surprising to some of you, but I got a tour of the inside. Barclay Card has invested already, just for the first 200 employees they put in there, $10 million. $10 million. Uh, the president of Barclay Card told me that on Monday, just in the fourth floor of that building. And they have more money they're going to be putting in. And I get excited about capital investment. When you put money into something tangible that's going to stay here, that to me is impressive. In the presentation, I have a couple slides just because it's easier to show you a picture than try to talk about it. But has anyone been to the, the framing gallery downtown that opened in the last 12 months? Yeah. I've seen a few people say yes. Um, I've had several things framed there. 
a shameless plug for them, but I, I would encourage people that are going to a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels to, uh, to give Pop Revolution uh, a chance. Uh, they said they've been pretty slow lately. They're trying to build their awareness that they are in the downtown. So you don't have to leave Hamilton if you want something framed. Who's eating at High Street Cafe? It's pretty darn good, isn't it? I eat there way too much. I need to stop eating there. But uh, they, they've actually been so busy, they just built out the basement for overflow crowding. I mean, it's, so it's, it's just been, they haven't even opened in a year yet. They opened in June of last year. But this is a true Hamilton success story. But uh, Phil and Sean, the, the executive chef and the sous chef, they do a, a fabulous job. Um, so happy to have them in the downtown. I have a couple slides that I think we sent an initial presentation over, but uh, we'll show you some of the new slides. I want to show you Markham Park. For those of you who may not have seen what that's going to look like when it's finished, I want to show you the Champion Paper, what they're calling the Champion um, Paper Sports Complex, or just the Champion Sports Complex now. I want to show you uh, a rendering of what the Pocket Park on 2nd and High Street is going to look like. And also, I got the permission from a developer just about an hour and a half ago to talk about a development that hopefully will be going into the former Mercy Hospital parking lot. So if you think about on the, on the south side of Dayton, as Boyce is uh, bringing this up really quick, the one thing that, that strikes me today, and I've not been in Hamilton yet for six years. <laughs> I think it's the system. No, it's, it's right here. I'll just talk loud. But uh, in, I've not even been here for six years yet. But in the first five and a half years, uh, projects would come and they would go, and it was slow at times. I will tell you today, I was telling this to Jeff Thurman before I started, it's Wednesday, I'm tired. It, it's tiring right now because there's a lot going on, which is a good thing. And someone asked me the question uh, before we started, they said, well, if all this happens on Main Street, aren't we going to have a parking problem? I said, I hope we have a parking problem, because we have a parking problem that tells me we did the job right and that we're busy. It's when we don't have a parking problem I get concerned because when you can park wherever you want, that tells me that the demand is not there. But uh, I'm excited about the prospect of having a parking problem, and I think we're actually seeing that now on Main Street, or excuse me, on High Street. Uh, with the new businesses that have come in on High Street, we're actually seeing those type of. Just talk that way, and when you turn your head the other way, that's what you think. I gotta look this way? <laughs> I'm gonna stand right here and just look at the same direction, but. Uh, Listen, I'm a one-trick pony. This is going to throw me off. But, uh, but it's just an exciting time. Um, I had some developers at my house Monday night. For, they are at my house probably for four and a half hours. Uh, I made them dinner. I'm trying to give them the sales pitch on Hamilton. They've already invested a lot of money on the high street side of downtown. I'm trying to get them interested on investing on the main street side of downtown. Um, I have a meeting next week with the Lonnie brothers. And some of you may know Nick and Nancy Lonnie. Uh, Nancy Lonnie is uh, Harry Wilkes' daughter, um, working with them on a potential restaurant concept. Obviously, they've been highly successful in opening restaurants all across the United States and other areas. But uh, actually, taking uh, our director of public safety, Scott Scramese, with me on that uh, visit. But I think he's more excited about going to a Lonnie restaurant than he is to have lunch with me. But uh, regardless, he's going with me. We're going to give them the sales pitch. But um, I just it's just a very exciting time. and is. And as Mr. Thurman said, um, or told you 2,000 was actually, I think it's 3,300 jobs that have either been here or been promised for the next couple years with Barclay Card and StarTech being two of the bigger ones. But uh, thinking about ThyssenKrupp, Bilstein, the fact that they have added over 400 jobs in the last couple years, that Valio um, has added over 100 jobs. We've, just had, we've had a lot of positive job announcements. Um, I was with the president of Fort Hamilton Hospital, Mark Smith, earlier today. We were in my office for two hours having conversations about many topics. Uh, and they've slowly been hiring uh, some very high paid positions over there also. So it's just a very exciting time to, um, to have those jobs coming. And right on cue, I think Boyce has got me with some more slides. And let's jump right to Markham Park. You don't need to see the pictures, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. The frame shop is located uh, immediately south of the, of the Rentschler building. It's what they now call the Key Bank building. So it would be to the east of the courthouse on 2nd Street, just south of High Street. Was it, I think someone said that used to be a movie theater. Beneficial finance. Beneficial finance. 
But wasn't a, was it a movie theater before that? Yeah. No, it's a dress shop. The, yes. But before Dress Shop, it wasn't a theater? They're saying yes, it was. At some point in its lifetime, it was uh, a movie theater. All right, I think we're back on track. We have slides. So Markham Park, which is now under construction, in the, in the construction timeline, it should be complete by October of this year, uh, is going to do a lot of landscaping. It's going to, as you can see, have some water features to it. Uh, here's a good picture of the uh, aerial of that park, but just for perspective, the amphitheater, which is closest to the river, is on the left side of the screen, and you can see that what they call the Great Lawn area, then past that, the oasis, the grove. It's, it's really going to be an incredible project, and you know, many, many thanks to Joe Markham and his family for uh, donating the money so the city could actually do this park. The sports complex. Um, the latest rendering that we have, and I talked to um, the gentleman that uh, proposed doing this, I, I would say probably at least three, if not four or five times a week. He is highly engaged. He's a very successful businessman. He actually um, owned Auntie Anne's pretzels, if you've ever eaten at Auntie Anne's pretzels at the malls. He sold those off about five, six years ago, and I, I think he was telling, I don't know if it was the mayor or I, or it was, it was me and someone else, that um, he was in his 40s when he sold it, made a lot of money, thought he was set, and he said the next six months he got depressed because he had nothing to do. And so he opened a sports complex up about four years ago, three, between three and four years ago in Pennsylvania, um, and it's been wildly successful. So this will be the second one. So he's done this already. This is not like he's saying, hey, I want to try this in Hamilton, Ohio. He's already done this, and he's done it very successfully. But um, just for perspective again, this building here, this would be the, the former office building the, the real handsome office building built, I think, in the 1920s. And then this would be the former B Street. And you can see what is being proposed is that B Street would wrap around the facility. The reason they want to do that is they want to turn the mill, I think it was called Mill 2 on the river, turn that into a hotel, restaurant, and some other uses. And they want uh, the kids to be able to walk from the sports complex across what's currently B Street without having to worry about traffic. So it's, it's very fast and narrow traffic in there. So they're talking about routing the road along the backside. So it would come close to where North C Street currently is up on the hill. So it'd be right on the bottom of that hill uh, from North C Street. Are they, keeping the office building there? they are keeping the office building. And you probably can't see it, but it, what the office building right now is labeled is, is a boutique hotel. So what they would like to do is turn that into a very high-end hotel. So this would be more of your average hotel, but if you want to spend a little bit more money, they're going to have some bigger rooms as a plan in the old office building. That office building is gorgeous. The inside of that is a stunning piece of architecture, and they recognize that, and they, they really want to keep as much of the heritage of the, of the mill in place, and they're going to incorporate a lot of the original pieces to that. Downtown Pocket Park. So again, for perspective, this is the parking garage. Former Elder Beerman would be right along here. So this would be right across the street. And the purpose of this is we're trying to drive more residents into living in the downtown. And we believe if we can give the residents uh, some recreational things in the downtown, because if you live in an apartment complex or a condominium complex, the one thing you do, you do not have is a yard. Markham Park obviously will be very nice for those that don't have their own yard. But this will be even hopefully a little bit more convenient. The one thing that's not shown on this rendering, but is certainly planned, is a, an area for dogs. A lot of people want to have like a small dog uh, in an apartment. They're going to need a place for their dog to hang out occasionally. So we, we recognize that. Um, that would probably be back somewhere in this area down here. But we want to draw as many people into the downtown as possible. Because the one thing that I, I remember when I first came here, and I, I thought it was very odd of a community of 60,000 plus people, is that downtown was just deserted at night. And I would work late, and the first month and a half I lived here, I, I stayed at the Marriott until I, I bought my house. I remember I would leave work 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and it was just eerie because the street lights were on, but the building lights were all turned off. There was no one on the sidewalks, and it just was, and I had only you know, walked four blocks, five blocks back to the Marriott. It was just a very interesting, almost deserted type of feeling. Um, and I, we've certainly made some strides in the right direction, certainly have a long way to go in many areas, but I feel this, was, this is one of those sort of missing pieces, is just having um, 
if you want people to live in your downtown or even during the lunch hour to get out of the building and be outside, we thought that uh, something like this would attract uh, the workers downtown during the day and hopefully at night would bring some more people into the downtown. Yes? I noticed that the picnic table in that vacant lot type thing is often I, I think so. I, I, I'd like to think that if we could put a couple um, things in here. As an example, we approached some of the businesses. We had one business donate a concrete ping pong table. That way it will withstand the weather. But um, even in our building, there are three ping pong, indoor ping pong tables in our building. Uh, ODW Logistics uh, has one, which is on the sixth floor. And there's two other ones in the building. And people are always playing ping pong. But wouldn't it be nice to see them playing outside versus inside? And we got that idea by uh, the park that's down in Cincinnati on the river. They have, a, they have several concrete ping pong tables. And people are always, every time I go by, people are always playing ping pong. It's just sort of nice to see that. We want to put a giant chess set up in there so people can go out and they play checkers or chess. And uh, we've been working with our Hamilton Parks Conservancy about at night when the park closes, they'll move like the chess pieces into a, like a lock shed. Otherwise, they may end up floating down the river. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> But I, I'm excited. I think that between Markham Park and this park, that um, it's, it's really an exciting time to really drive some people into the downtown. This is the developer that's talking about the uh, former Mercy parking lot development. So do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? It's on the south side of Dayton. So immediately across from Markham Park or immediately across from the Marriott, depending on what perspective you're looking at. He loves this site because when you stand there and you look, you have St. Julie's Church, that's you know, a beautiful church. You stand there and you look, you're looking at the park, you're looking at the Marriott. The mayor talked about the microbrewery that's opening up. Um, I talked to him today, they should be open mid-week mid next week, so about a week from today. You have all this activity, um, but we only have a handful of apartments in the downtown. He's proposing 94 apartment units and four retail outlets. So you can see that, um, that he has a graders um, in, the, in the curve building there. And then he has a canoe shop down at one end. He has a, like a, a, a bar and um, grill, if you will, on the other end. And I can't remember if he's got another retail outlet uh, on the far end. But this is the type of product that we don't have right now that we desperately need. Um, and part of the reason I was talking to Mark Smith was I was asking him to serve on an ad hoc committee that's being created to help retain people in Hamilton. My belief, and I'm speaking off of what people have told me, is when you are recruited to Ohio Casualty or Mercy Hospital or any of the other companies in Hamilton, you probably lived in Hamilton. And today that's just not the case. And the one thing that I would say if I have any disappointment at all with some of the job announcements that we've had, a lot of people I'm talking to, they don't live in Hamilton. And they have jobs in Hamilton, but then, then they're leaving. And that's a problem, and it's a problem for many reasons. First and foremost, it's a problem because it has an impact on our small businesses. Because once you go to work and you leave, you're not going to drive back into Hamilton to go to a restaurant. You're not going to drive back into Hamilton to, to fill up your car with gas. You're not going to drive back to Hamilton to, to go to the grocery store. We need, it's called the economic multiplier. We need the, the dollars that people are earning in the community to be multiplied throughout the community. So I've talked to Mark Smith, who's the president of Fort Hamilton Hospital, and they employ 1,000 people. I talked to Jeff Thurman about this, who employs over 600 people. Um, I've had a conversation with the, the school superintendent, Tony Orr. They employ over 1,500 people. Uh, the city of Hamilton has almost 600 employees. So it, I'm trying to get a group together and to figure out how we can showcase the community before people make a decision not to live here. We, we want to give them every reason to move here. And I think a product like this, especially if you're, as an example, you're a young teacher, you're a young police officer, you're a nurse at the hospital, um, and you want, you, know, you want an apartment. A lot of people, from what I'm hearing, are moving out to Westchester. They're moving actually as far away as Hyde Park, Oakley, because we don't have enough restaurants. We don't have enough nightlife. We don't have a lot of, you know, I'm hearing this. So it's, it's all about sort of connecting the dots. We know what we want, but what comes first? Do the people come first before you have the restaurants, or do you need the restaurants first before the people come? It's, we finally gave up trying to answer the question. We're just trying to do it all at one time and uh, go as fast as possible. But, um, but we know we need a product like this. So we're excited about this. We've been working very hard. Uh, we have actually entered into a, a, a letter of intent with the development company, giving them 90 days to do due diligence. Um, 
to their credit, they've been meeting with a lot of community folks. They've been up here quite a bit uh, doing their due diligence. I'm very hopeful you'll see a backhoe in that property March of next year with a, with a completion date by about Christmas of 2017 with this product. But I, I think it's critical that we keep people that are taking jobs in Hamilton, keep them here, because once they live here, I think it's much easier than when they're, when they're done living in an apartment and they want to buy a house than to buy a house in Hamilton, because they know Hamilton uh, at, by that point. Uh, just talking uh, to the school superintendent, I mean, we've lost almost all the new teachers that were hired to outside of Hamilton. Uh, a lot of city employees, you know, when they come here, aren't staying in Hamilton, and we need to give them a reason why. So I think this is a, 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 a big piece of that. That is actually, that is finally the last slide. Um, I know that, uh, I think I'm the only thing now between you and dinner, so I will, <laughs> I'm going to go right to questions and invite the mayor back up so we can answer questions together, but I, I would love to answer anything, that, any question you may have. Yes? Why is it Well, I'll give you my opinion, and it's this. Um, we don't control it. We, we didn't control Elder Beerman. Until we controlled Elder Beerman, I guarantee you that would have sat empty. That is why we created the core fund. Because if we can't control the real estate, we can't steer it. Um, and frankly, what they want for that real estate, we can't afford. Um, I, I had a conversation with a developer today about that very building. I'm begging anyone to look at it, but there's, there's very little we can do. We've actually created marketing plans at no cost to the, to the owner, trying to push it. But um, I will tell you this, when Barclay Card came and they were looking for buildings, we tried to show them that building. But again, we don't have the keys. We can't take anyone in there. We have to depend on the person that owns it. They never came to town to open, open it up and it out at Knightsbridge. It's owned by IRG. It's a company out of Los Angeles. They probably have 50 to 100 million square feet of real estate all across the United States. Would it be fair to say that, that we've marketed it more than the actual owners marketed it? Well, I, I'll, I'll give you a good story about the Ohio Casualty Buildings. I was reading an article in the Business Courier about five months ago, and they were talking about available real estate, the biggest pieces of real estate that were available in greater Cincinnati. And this included northern Kentucky, uh, southeast Indiana, and the greater Cincinnati area. They weren't even on there. They were bigger than all these other buildings. They weren't even on there. So I called the owner. I was like, I said, this is an embarrassment. I said, you need to put something out there so people even know that you're here. I said, because people are reading this article, they don't even know your building's available. So we're going to keep working with them, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. Uh, but yes? Also, McNeil's is very good food, too. Yeah. Neal's? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, Mike Neal does a tremendous job. That's another one that's on 3rd Street. Yeah. I feel bad for him at times because the, the Ohio casually is big, empty building. Yeah. is like almost like a break between downtown and there, but I would, I, I, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I have to commend you. I love the bike trail. I ride the bike trail probably once a week. I said, the only issue is once in a while when you have the high river, it floods, but it goes away in a couple of days. One of the things I think would be really nice is to have an access to the park up there from the bike trail. And uh, I ride that, and I think there is no way to get up there. Well, it wouldn't be a very expensive proposition. Day Dayton, I ride Dayton, too, and I said, Dayton has some ramps to get up to the city and I said it would be good business for uh, you know the city to have access to the park and they could get into the downtown very easily. Well I have good news and bad news for you. What do you want first? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that that will be installed. The ramp will be installed this fall okay. right by the amphitheater. The bad news is it's much more expensive than you think. How much? If, if you had to guess what do you think it would cost to build a ramp? 50000 Multiply that by 14, and that is the cost. Oh, really? my gosh. That is why it, it was delayed as much as it was. It, uh, it was a $700,000 project to build the ramp. And that's because MCD controls certain pieces of that. It has to be handicap accessible, which a lot of the old ones didn't have to be. There's a lot of federal regulations. Um, we bid it out twice trying to get the best price, and that was the best price, unfortunately. But I agree. We need it. It's going to be built this fall. Yes. Even a stairway would be, you know, that would be. Oh, that's a long stairway, stairway with a bike on your shoulders. But well, uh, there, is, there, is a, there is a stairway just by the Main Street Bridge there. Yes, yeah, by the, the yeah, right by the fitness center. It's a, it's a chore. Yes. I've done that. Okay, so there's a really beautiful landmark, the uh, old 
railroad station, train station. Is there anything, I mean, in my little hometown where I was from, they re renovated their little train station and it's, um, they use it for um, class reunions and all kinds of and weddings and things like that. It's, it's you know, a, a nice little park. But that's a beautiful landmark. That's a beautiful, um, wonderful old building. I don't know what kind of uh, state it's in, but is there anything that can be done? Are you talking about the one that's on the MLK? Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Well, that, um, that, well, first and foremost, that depot has tremendous history because in 1859, uh, Abraham Lincoln spoke on the back of a, a rail car right at that depot. Um, uh, and I can tell you that city council has identified that as something they want to do. But here's the issue as I see it. CSX does not want it anymore because it's literally at the, con you have two different uh, tracks that come in right there. Um, so if we turned, if we rehabbed it, there's really no area to park and to use it because they said that we cannot park in the railroad right away. So even now there are spaces around there. The railroad right away goes, I think it's 100 feet uh, or 50 feet from the middle of the railroad tracks on either side. So we've actually talked about taking it apart and then reestablishing it somewhere where people could actually see it and use it. Um, because right now it's in an area that I don't think most people are like on foot or on bikes going by that area. We actually talked about last year trying to take it apart and move it over to uh, close to actually the bike trail so people could actually see it. Um, it is incredibly cost prohibitive to do that. I don't know if you have any comments. There is a committee looking into it. Um, I think Mike Dingledine might be on that and a few other folks who have looked at disassembling and reassembling. I mean, what it could be is amazing. It could make it a farmer's market type of place. Uh, you can make it almost like a museum. You can do a lot of things with that. There's also a second train depot, and it's on Maple Avenue inside uh, where Cohen's uh, scrap yard, or whatever he wants to call it, recycle yard. That's also a very nice one, but again, it's, it's location, 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 and the cost to actually move it, to move it or do something special at that particular location, so. Yes. Do you still plan to close one lane each way on Main Street? We had a meeting, uh, so the question was, uh, do we plan on closing uh, a lane? For, first of all, it wasn't ever about closing any of the lanes, it was about taking the on-street parking and removing that. Oh, okay. um, we had a meeting with the property owners last Thursday night at Partners in Prime, and it was very well attended. And we asked the, the businesses that were in that area about what their thoughts were. So just quickly, um, we talked about how do we revitalize Main Street? And the one thing that we keep hearing is we don't have enough restaurants in a, in a proximity that draws a crowd of people. So our thought was, well, where the parking on the street was, if we took that and moved the sidewalks further out, then we could put sidewalk parking. And I, I heard then a, a lot of comments. One of the comments I heard, well, it's too loud over there. Traffic goes too fast. So I went down to, who's been to Loveland, Ohio? I went down to Loveland about three weeks ago and I sat at a restaurant on Loveland Avenue. And I will tell you that traffic was very busy, that there were motorcycles, there were diesel trucks, there was lots of traffic. And I sat outside for three hours. because I, I just wanted to experience firsthand and, and see what my thoughts were. Every restaurant that had outdoor seating, there was four of them on that stretch, was completely full the entire time I was there. So that told, tells me that people want to be out on a nice day, they want to be outdoors. <coughs> Is that, is that time to eat? What does that, what does that mean? But, uh, <laughs> but, I, think, uh, yeah, I think there's one more question, but I want to add a little bit to what, what Joshua is saying. As long as you can get emergency vehicles through that area, I think it'd be a big positive. I saw uh, the bump outs and the outdoor seating in Covington a weekend before last. And when you do expand the sidewalk, it does calm the traffic going down the street. If you calm the traffic, go a little bit slower, you might pull off park, take a walk, visit the area more. It, uh, slowing, slowing down the vehicle is probably not a bad thing because you might then see something you have never seen before. Visit a place you've never visited before. But we had a good meeting up at, at Partners in Prime this is earlier this week. In every scenario, one last comment on that, every scenario that we've looked at, actually we, we add more parking than currently exists today. 
so even if it's like, uh, if you think about the small parking area by the True West on Main Street, we're going to create at least two, if not three areas like that in that same area. So there are 43 on-street parking spaces between B and D intersections along Main. Um, the worst case scenario is that we would add a net of 13 more parking spaces. And that's the worst scenario. I think we're going to have a net of about 25 more parking spaces when it's all said and done. Can we know how important the parking piece is? I think we have time for a, one half of a question or <laughs> I don't want to interfere with dinner, but, but one more for, for any one of us. I know the Red Lobsters like to be near expressways. Some of their business models are that way, but I think we've had more interest here lately about some possible restaurants on the, coming in from the west. I'll just give you my very fast opinion. The, the heartbeat of any city is, is going to be the downtown area. I think for a long time when the downtown was struggling, then if you look at what happened on the, the outer ring of Hamilton, if you will, so going out to like the west side, as you said, I think a lot of people left. I think people moved out to the townships and restaurants, they do a lot of research before they come and they look at a lot of demographic information and what they saw were trends where people were moving out with discretionary income. So if you looked like where Hobby Lobby went, I mean, they went to Fairfield Township for a reason um, because they track zip codes and they know where their, uh, their shoppers are coming from. And I think that if we fix the core part of the city, which we're working very hard at doing, it becomes easier. Everyone obviously is not going to live in downtown. They're not going to live in Main Street. Hopefully some people will. But we understand that it's going to be easier to get people to live on the east side and the west side of Hamilton if the middle part of Hamilton, for lack of a better phrase, is strong. So we're working very, very hard to drive jobs into the downtown, but also jobs at, at uh, the former champion office on Knightbridge. We have a lot of job creation that people don't really talk about that's happening on Bypass 4 and close to the Sims Road area. Um, you know, we talked, I think, two years ago when the mayor and I were here about Influx, which is wholly owned by Procter & Gamble. I had lunch with their president not too long ago. They're doing amazing things out there. They're buying uh, equipment that costs tens of millions of dollars. They've hired uh, lots of new employees. They're going to be at 250 employees by this time next year, and they had zero employees there <coughs> two years ago. That is, it's, it's time for dinner. I think I need to shut <laughs> up. Uh... Thank you so much. Can we give the mayor and the city manager a huge round of applause? Enjoy the antipasto that's on your tables already, and then we will get dinner started. Thank you.